Hi everyone, Rich Savelle here. On today's video, we're going to be talking about Hyde Syndrome. I'm excited about this and want to share it with you because it looks at two common problems that are seen in critically ill patients and points out that there's a relationship. So let's get started. So the first question is what are we talking about? And what we're talking about is the fact that elderly patients, or non-elderly patients, can have lower GI bleeding. And in a patient with, who has lower GI bleeding, an association was found uh, quite a few years ago, in 1958, between lower GI bleeding and patients with aortic stenosis. And what's exciting is that those two common entities are related to each other. And what I want to do in this video is point that out to you and point out that it is understood at the molecular level why they're related to each other and why, with great excitement, the point I want to make is that if you treat the aortic stenosis in these patients, the lower GI bleeding goes away. So let's go through this. So the first is the definition of Hyde syndrome. And the definition, as you can see here from the slide, is that gastrointestinal hemorrhage from angiodysplasia, usually in the colon, in the presence of aortic stenosis. And as you can see from my friend here, that as I mentioned before, if you treat the aortic stenosis, usually the lower GI bleeding goes away. And so what I want to do is take for a few moments and share with you who Hyde was. This was Edward C. Hyde. He was an internist. And he sent a letter to the New England Journal of Medicine in 1958. And I've uh, put an abbreviated version here. In the past 10 years, I have seen at least 10 patients with calcific aortic stenosis who had massive gastrointestinal bleeding for which we could discover no cause. They were nearly all elderly people, and most of them had classic signs of calcific aortic stenosis. And to help it get published, he wrote, I would appreciate you printing this letter. I don't know how helpful that would be today. And you can see the reference from the New England Journal of Medicine in 1958. But he didn't understand the mechanism then. It was an association. And so using this picture, I want to spend a few moments to explain to you why patients with aortic stenosis develop angiodysplasia and lower GI bleeding. And so it has to do with von Willebrand factor. And as you can see on the left side of this uh, image here, these are these uh, dimers of von Willebrand factor that because the normal aortic valve does not affect those molecules in any way, when there's problems with bleeding, the von Willebrand factor can adhere to endothelial injury, can adhere to platelets, and to begin the process of clot formation. So what you'll see here on the right-hand side of the slide is very interesting because it's the fundamental mechanism of Hyde syndrome. You can see that according to the picture here, the stenotic aortic valve uncoils the multimer of von Willebrand factor, exposing the uh, von Willebrand factor to an enzyme, the metalloproteinase Adam TS13. And the Adam TS13 can cleave the multimers of, Adam, of von Willebrand factor, leaving them inactivated. And so those can no longer adhere to the endothelial injury and begin the process of clot formation. This is also very interesting because the Adam TS13 is key to the understanding of thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and that it is either an underproduction or antibodies against Adam TS13 that lead to the fundamental mechanism of action, uh, the fundamental mechanism pathophysiologically of uh, TTP. So you can see that Adam TS13 can be very key in disease. And so the, the point that I wanted to make for people who are thinking about this disease is that a patient who comes in with lower GI bleeding is common and that using a simple physical examination or if you're concerned, get an echocardiogram to help determine if the patient has aortic stenosis and that this aortic stenosis can specifically be leading to the etiology of the bleeding. One of the other controversies here is 
is the actual aortic stenosis and abnormality in von Willebrand factor cause the angiodysplasia in these patients? That is less clear. And, uh, but what is clear is the relationship between patients with aortic stenosis, that this aortic stenosis leads to an uncoiling and an inactivation of von Willebrand factor, and that this uncoiling and inactivated von Willebrand factor allows patients with angiodysplasia to bleed. And again, if the aortic stenosis is, is picked up and treated, the bleeding stops. Thanks so much for watching.